And now we're ready to look at the stereochemistry of the carbon-1 position of the cyclic hemiacetal form of glucopyranose. That position has a special name. It's referred to as the anomeric carbon atom. And which of the two possible stereochemistries one gets at the anomeric carbon depends on which of the two diastereotopic faces that the incoming hydroxyl group is delivered to. So the two diastereotopic faces of the aldehyde are shown there, and hydroxyl group could add either to the top face to give one stereochemistry at the anomeric carbon, or that hydroxyl group could be delivered to the bottom side, which would give us the opposite stereochemistry at the anomeric carbon. Here you can see that the oxygen atom was added to the top face because we have the wedge, and as that sp2 center transformed into an sp3 tetrahedral carbon, what we did was move those substituents back below the plane of the screen. In other words, as you, the observer, sees those substituents, they're pointing that way. And what we really need for a valid Fisher projection is that those substituents are pointing toward you, the observer. And so what we need to do is to do a rotation about the atom, the carbon 1 to carbon 2 atom like that, and what that will do is to take those substituents pointing away from you and move them toward you, and it will also move the hydroxyl group from being on the left-hand side to being on the right-hand side, and the same thing for that hydrogen. And so then we can draw a valid Fischer projection, and by the way, this oxygen carbon bond, which was pointing up, that's not valid Fischer projection drawing, uh, is now going to be heading back, and so we have all of the atoms as they're supposed to be drawn in the vertical line of the Fischer projection. The key thing, though, is not how we got here, but more where that hydroxyl group is positioned. This is the important point. When that hydroxyl group is positioned on the same side as the configuration at the last position, in this case it's a D sugar, so that last position is pointing toward the right. When the hydroxyl group is similarly pointing in that direction, D sugar pointing toward the right, what we have then is the alpha anomer. So for the hydroxyl group on the right with a D sugar, the alpha anomer would, would uh, be what is represented there. By the way, if we had an L sugar, with an L sugar, that last substituent would be pointing toward the left. And so as that looped around and came back to the carbon atom number one, then the hydroxyl group would be over there. That still is the alpha anomer, but it's for the L sugar. And so the same side, this is um, the way to always recognize this, anomeric hydroxyl group on the same side as the D or L defining position, then that's the alpha anomer. And what we see on the bottom is we have a valid Fischer projection since the incoming oxygen was from below. Those substituents upon rehybridization moved into the correct positions for Fischer projection. The hydroxyl group is on the left-hand side. That's opposite of the D-defining position. Opposite hydroxyl group at the anomeric carbon means that we're dealing with the beta anomer. The last point I want to make here is how to always recognize the anomeric carbon. The anomeric carbon is the only carbon that has two oxygens bound to it. All of the other carbon atoms have, at most, one oxygen bound to it. The anomeric carbon is the only carbon that has two oxygens attached to it. And so, as a point of reference, in a cyclic hemiacetal uh, sugar, you should always be looking for the carbon atom with two oxygens bound to it. That's the reference point. That's the anomeric carbon. Now let's try to take that Fischer projection and represent it into a three-dimensional form. What I would encourage you to do is to build a model, if you haven't already done so, of glucose. And here's the Fischer projection that we just finished drawing. This is, you can see, the beta anomer, the hydroxyl group at the anomeric carbon, which is a position to the left-hand side, opposite to the D-defining position. That, that's the beta anomer. We want to draw that into a three-dimensional form, and a convenient form is the Hayworth projection. In the Hayworth projection, starting at carbon atom 1, all of the atoms are in the plane, in a plane, and then the substituents are either above that plane or below that plane. And, and so what we need to do is to get all of the atoms that are part of the ring in the plane. And that's pretty close to what the Fischer projection is. In the Fischer projection, 
those atoms are all drawn vertically, and so that means they're all part of that cyclic loop, the plane, but the oxygen atom is out of the plane. And so what we need to do in order to make that part of the plane is to put it into the vertical position. It needs to go right where CH2OH is, carbon atom 6 is, in order to be part of the planar set of atoms. Now, the way to do that is to do this rotation, and when we do the rotation, the substituent that's over on this side will end up going into the position that's currently occupied by carbon-6. Carbon-6 will end up taking the position that's occupied by that hydrogen, and that hydrogen atom will end up occupying the position that's currently occupied by the oxygen. And so now, we have a Fisher projection in which all of the six atoms that are part of the ring, including the oxygen atom, are in the vertical line, and so we have the planar set of atoms as they're drawn here in this Hayworth projection. Now in the Hayworth projection, a convention is that that oxygen atom is always located in the upper right hand corner, and carbon atom number one is in the farthest most right hand position. And so in a clockwise direction, we travel around the ring. That's the convention for representing the D sugars. You can see that we can transform that Fisher projection into that Hayworth projection immediately. So looking at carbon number one, everything that's on the left hand side of the Fisher projection is going to be up above the plane, and everything that's on the right hand side of that Fisher projection is going to be down. And so notice hydroxyl group at carbon one is there, and then hydroxyl group at carbon three is there, and, hydrox and the CH2OH group, which came from carbon atom 5, is also up. Everything on the opposite side, hydroxyl group at 2, hydroxyl group at 4, are, are down. So right hand side down, left hand side up in that Hayworth projection. We can transform that into a ring uh, that we would typically associate with a chair form. And that's that, uh, there's the chair form. You should make your own. This happens to be, by the way, the beta configuration. So there again is the anomeric carbon, the only carbon that has two oxygens attached to it. The beta form, that oxygen is up. And we can see that the beta glucose, beta D-glucose, all the substituents are in the equatorial position. We could have flipped that around and put all the substituents axial, but that's not a very favorable form. And of course, the alpha form, there's just a configuration change at the anomeric carbon, and so there's going to be, instead of an equatorial bond for that carbon-1 to oxygen, it's going to be in the axial position with everything else remaining fixed. That would be the alpha anomer, and you can remember that as um, alpha axial beta equatorial.